Tennessee Senator Bill Haggerty joins us now live from Nashville to discuss all of this. He's a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and also the Appropriations Committee. Senator, great to have you with us today. It's good to be with you on this Christmas Eve, Shannon. Thank you. Okay, we'll try to get to all of those things, but I want to start with some overnight news um, from CENTCOM about more attacks in the Red Sea. They say in Saturday they took down four incoming drones to a U.S. destroyer. That destroyer was then asked to come to the aid of two different commercial vessels that said they came under attack or attempted attack. Uh, Iran seems to be behind much of this. The Wall Street Journal reporting this. The direct involvement by Iranian actors in the attacks raises the stakes for Israel and the U.S., which are eager to contain Tehran's role in the region and risks creating a new front in the conflict between Israel and its foes in the region, just as the U.S. is trying to stop it from escalating. Do you think the Biden administration is taking the appropriate response action with regard to Iran's involvement in all of these things? They're not taking a consistent response, so of course it's not appropriate. That's why Iran feels emboldened. What we've seen is put two aircraft carrier strike groups into the region. That's a massive show of military force. But we've been highly inconsistent in terms of the way we deal with Iran from an economic standpoint and from a diplomatic standpoint. From an economic standpoint, Shannon, you remember under President Trump, we put in place the maximum pressure campaign. I worked on that in his administration. We brought down Iran's foreign currency reserves to below $8 billion. As soon as Joe Biden came into office, they stopped enforcing the sanctions. Billions of dollars began to flow. According to our estimates, they've enriched themselves by over $100 billion in terms of illicit oil sales, and it continues just because the Biden administration wants to appease the Iranian regime. From a diplomatic standpoint, we've been sending mixed messages to Israel. You know, we, we talk about ceasefires. We talk about sending humanitarian aid into Gaza. We talk about putting conditions on aid. These mixed messages and the fact that we've allowed Iran to enrich itself and repopulate Hamas and Hezbollah and the Houthis with the weapons that they need have created this situation. We need to come back and snap back economic sanctions immediately on Iran. We need to send a clear diplomatic message. That's what we need to see to get the situation to calm down. We have to maintain freedom of navigation operations in the seas. We cannot cede that to Iran. It's just one of the many foreign policy headaches for this administration, a serious yeah. issues that they have got to find solutions to the border, of course, that we've talked about. I want to just recap where we are, because late Friday, going into a holiday weekend, we got new numbers on what's happening there. Nearly 243,000 encounters with people at the southern border illegally. Highest number on November, highest November on record. It's the third highest month in this current crisis. We've got days where more than 12,000 people are showing up a day at the southern border. A woman this week reportedly crossed in illegally from Colombia was given a 2031 date to check in with ICE. One Border Patrol agent told us the people in charge have turned an entire agency of courageous individuals into department store greeters. This is one of the looming issues. You guys have got to hammer out in January. Can you tell yes. those Border Patrol agents or the American people more broadly there are substantive changes coming? Shannon, you use the word crisis. It couldn't, be, it couldn't be more appropriate. And we have been sending that message. In fact, every single Republican unanimously blocked movement on this Ukraine package until we deal with the southern border. I think Chuck Schumer and Joe Biden need to get the message that Republicans are serious about this. We are unanimous that this has to be dealt with. And if you look at what's happened just since October, October the 7th, the Hamas invasion took place in Israel. Christopher Wray, our FBI chief, said that the number of alerts from a national security standpoint, standpoint have gone up like a Christmas tree since that happened. They've encountered over 150 nationalities crossing our border illegally just since October. We don't know who's in our nation, Shannon, but we do know this. It's destabilizing our country. The fentanyl that's coming in is killing our kids. Cities are overwhelmed, and we have many, many people here on the terrorist watch list. We don't know what they're going to do, yet the risk is going up exponentially. We have to deal with it now. We have sent that message loud and clear. Negotiations took place leading up to Christmas. They've fallen apart. The Biden administration has to understand that we are serious as Republicans. We're going to stand up against this. We have to make certain that we do in the 11 days that we've got when we get back into session. You mentioned they've fallen apart. Do you feel that it's come to a stop? Are we moving backwards? Is there forward progress? Where are we in your assessment? It's hard to say because we've got to see it all come together at once. We, we get piecemeal language that might work, that might be one step forward, but if they loosen something else, Shannon, does that make sense? Uh, we've got to look at it in its entirety because the Biden administration has been clear. They want to destabilize the border. They're encouraging as many people to flood into this nation as they possibly can, essentially to backfill the blue states where populations are leaving and help them in the calculation of congressional seats going forward and electoral votes. But that needs to stop. 
The danger that they're willing to put our nation through is unconscionable. Uh, the number of lives that we deal with just here in Tennessee that are lost to fentanyl, two to 3,000 kids this year, Shannon, will die due to fentanyl overdoses. And the Biden administration is willing to look the other way while they transform America. It has to stop. Well, you're not suggesting they actually want our borders to be overrun and for Americans to be killed by what's coming across the border, are you? I'm suggesting that they're tolerating this. And it's clear. We already have the tools. President Trump proved this. He had the border taken down to a practical shutdown. The Remain in Mexico policy that's still on the books could be imposed tomorrow. Title 42, they tossed that. Everything that's happening right now is an acceleration of people into our nation. The supplemental language that the Biden administration sent over earlier for this package that includes Ukraine, Israel, when they say border, what they've asked for is more money to more rapidly process people into our country and for the ability to transform ICE, the only law enforcement agency we have that can deport people, to transform that agency into a resettlement agency. It's okay. a shame. So the supplemental uh, includes all of these very difficult conversations, but yes. it, it's just part of what's waiting for you in January. The New York Times puts it this way. It says the Senate failed to deliver on aid to Ukraine. It could not agree on a border policy plan and a government shutdown is on the horizon. Punchbowl sums it up this way very simply. January is going to be terrible. So the fact that we now have these two deadlines for government spending, you're on appropriations, you know the supplemental yes. bill. You know, the rating for Congress right now is in the teens. How do you tell America you're going to get this done? Well, we've been ready as Republicans uh, for, for months. We've had our old appropriations bills passed. Chuck Schumer has not been willing to move on any of them. Instead, he's put through radical Democrat nominees for judges. So we've got to get serious. We're going to be working night and day, I hope, when we return on January the 8th to get this done. But it could not be more critical. Absolutely. All right, Senator Haggerty, uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank Merry you, Christmas Shannon. to you and your family. Merry Christmas to you. Wonderful to be with you. Thanks.